Hi, I'm Larry Cavanaugh, and I'm here to read for you a chapter from my book, Soft Sermons with Wine and Cheese. Um, now you might ask, what is a soft sermon? And why would you be sipping wine if you're listening to a sermon that might be telling you that you're going to hell? Well, good questions. Uh, for one thing, this book doesn't contain any sermons at all. There are bits of enrichment in Christian history that are derived from a series of talks that I gave at my church. A series that was designed to delve into things that frequently get overlooked in Bible study classes and religious history classes, but are nevertheless fascinating stories in themselves. There's little or nothing that is threatening here, no fire and brimstone, but they involve some famous people in Christian history and some very good stories that involve religion. You can relax and enjoy these stories, and a little wine might be a good accompaniment. You may also say, but you aren't a clergyman. You aren't a theology professor. You're, you're a physicist. You're a NASA person whose head is all into rockets and astronomy. What do you know about religion? Well, of course, I don't have seminary training. But I did spend my adolescence at a Jesuit prep school where I took five years of Latin and two years of Greek, then four years at a university run by Holy Cross Fathers, and later my wife and I attended numerous retreats at an arch abbey run by Benedictine monks. Plus, I've done a lot of reading and research on my own, and I hope all of that counts for something. And anyway, I'm not trying to push any religion onto anybody, just trying to tell you some good stories. Stories that you can enjoy over things like wine and cheese. There, there are 16 complete stories in the book, and you can get the book from Amazon in Kindle, softcover, and hardcover versions. Every story contains lots of illustrations accessible through QR codes on your internet. So, enough. The chapter that I'm going to read is about Our Lady of Prompt Succor, which you might know something about if you're from Louisiana, but she's not at all well known anywhere else. The chapter begins, as all the chapters do, with a suggestion for the food and drink that could accompany it. The suggestion for this chapter goes like this. Wine and cheese idea. This is a New Orleans story. This is not about an apparition of the Blessed Virgin. There was no apparition. Many people may also say there was no miracle, but undeniably there was an event that went beyond the normal definitions of coincidence and was arguably the result of a lot of prayers by a lot of Ursuline nuns. Please read about it. And while you are reading, why not get into the mood of something French? something characteristic of New Orleans. That would mean switch from wine and have a Sazerac. A Sazerac is a rye drink that involves a sweetener and historically also involves absinthe. In the 1800s, Sazerac was a liqueur with an anise flavor that was enhanced with a bit of wormwood. Regrettably, wormwood can do permanently bad things to your brains and was famously ruinous to Van Gogh and Toulouse-Lautrec and others. However, there is a modern substitute that is free of wormwood. If you game, you can try a Sazerac. Or else, something that tastes of licorice. You can accompany it with a po' boy sandwich on a French baguette. And now, the story. <clears throat> if you're from Louisiana, you've probably heard of Our Lady of Prompt Succor. Otherwise, maybe not. Our Lady of Prompt Succor is the patroness of the state of Louisiana because of a dramatic event that occurred in New Orleans. But lest we continue confused, you may ask, Prompt Succor? What does that mean? Well, if it's Louisiana, there's bound to be something French about it. We can start with a place not too far from my home in Louisa, Virginia. There's a hospital in Richmond known as St. Mary's, otherwise known as 
Bon Secours. Bon Secours is a French name that means good help. Well, Prompt Secours would be the French name for fast help. And Our Lady of Prompt Secours is in fact associated with fast help. We're not French, we're Americans. And in America, we tend to corrupt foreign languages. So if you take prompt secours, fast help, and translate it into Americanese, prompt secours sounds a lot like prompt sucker. And maybe that's how we got the name. At any rate, that's my idea. Our Lady of Prompt Sucker has been a patroness in Louisiana for quite a while, going back to the time when the Ursuline nuns came to New Orleans. There are three distinctly different statues of her, representing distinctly different national affiliations as well as ethnicity. <clears throat> the original statue was created in 1810, a year after the lady was first known to be prompt by helping a nun, Mother Michelle, obtain an assignment of additional nuns from France to aid in running the convent and school. There are two official versions of the statue, the French version and the Spanish version, corresponding to the times when New Orleans was under French versus Spanish control. And there's also a Creole version where she is cast as Creole, holding her baby Jesus, who is also Creole, and recognizing the fact that the Ursulines established a school that was for everybody, not just white Europeans, but also including Creoles. To get the whole story right, we have to begin with the origin of the Ursulines. Many people think of the Ursulines as a French order, and for the most part they are now, but actually they were started by St. Angela Merici, an Italian who founded the order in 1535 in Italy in Brescia. St. Angela Merici was very strong on the idea of teaching young girls. And the reason why she founded this order was specifically to teach girls. When you understand that the whole Ursuline establishment is founded primarily on teaching girls, then you'll see why they call themselves Ursulines. Their namesake and patroness is St. Ursula, a saint from Roman times, about 383 AD and she was a martyr. She was very wealthy in her own right, and she was engaged to marry a person who was also wealthy. Prior to her engagement, she converted to Christianity. As the story goes, Ursula was going to her wedding, accompanied by 11,000 female escorts, all young girls. Along the journey, they were waylaid by t pagans, and St. Ursula and all 11,000 of her companions were martyred for the sake of Christianity because they refused to give up their faith. St. Ursula is a recognized saint and her feast day is October 21st. However, over the course of the last century, the Catholic Church has begun to question the actual story of St. Ursula, as well as those of several other saints from older times there is some possibility that there may not have actually been a real St. Ursula. She might have been fiction. However, St. Ursula was real to St. Angela Merici when she founded her order, and her story may have had a basis in truth, even if she had been accompanied by only 11 maidens and not 11,000 maidens. Now let's move fast forward. In 1726 in France, where the Ursulines had become quite well established, King Louis XV got it in his head that he needed to show some generosity to this land that he owned called Louisiana, wherever Louisiana was, apparently somewhere in North America. Louis XV reasoned, I've got a bunch of French noblemen that are actually trying to make a go of it in Louisiana. So I shall decree that three nuns from the Ursulines shall depart from Rulon to New Orleans, and their mission shall be to provide an education for the young girls 
of wealthy families over there. Let it be. The Ursulines did more than simply follow the order to send three nuns to Louisiana. They sent 14 nuns. In 1727, 14 Ursulines arrived in New Orleans and they took on the king's task to teach girls of wealthy families. But they didn't stop there. They also taught Native Americans, Creoles, rich people, poor people, slaves, as well as free people. They established the first girl school and convent in a vast territory of the current United States. From this beginning in 1727 through 1763, they grew under French control. In 1763, Louisiana fell under Spanish control, which is why there is a statue of Our Lady of Prompt Succor with a Spanish motif. Around 1800, the territory came back to France. However, this was a major problem for the Ursulines. Napoleon was in charge in France in 1800, and he was harsh to Catholics. In France, Napoleon was holding Pope Pius VII in prison, and he made life virtually impossible for all the Ursulines. Many of them fled Louisiana to Havana and other places. In 1803, when the United States purchased Louisiana from France and the territory came under United States control, this was a startling new thing. The United States was founded on the principle of religious freedom for everybody. The Ursuline nuns were invited by the new government to come back to Louisiana to continue their school. They knew nothing about the United States and they were frightened. And so, the head of their order, their mother superior, Sister Therese de saint Xavier wrote to the President of the United States and got a letter of reply. This is what Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Mother Superior. <clears throat> I've received, Holy Sisters, the letter you have written me, wherein you express anxiety for the property vested in your institutions by the former governments of Louisiana. The principles of the Constitution and government of the United States are a sure guarantee to you that it will be preserved to you sacred and inviolate and that your institution will be permitted to govern itself according to its own voluntary rules and that your institution will be allowed to be protected from the civil authority. Be assured it will meet all the protection which my office can give it. Signed, Thomas Jefferson. That was pretty good. And so the Ursulines returned. And on two critical occasions, they had a need to pray to Mary the Blessed Mother. First, there was a great fire in New Orleans in 1812, which threatened to burn down the whole city. The Ursulines prayed to Our Lady and asked her to spare their convent. Amazing as it may seem, the great fire which decimated a huge part of the city, including the famous View Carre, stopped when it reached the Ursuline convent and did not burn any part of it. It burned everything up to it, but it did not burn the convent. Three years later in 1815, the Battle of New Orleans was being fought and Andrew Jackson, with a small force of about 6,000 men, was facing the British with a force nearly triple in size. They were just outside the city, in a place called Chalmette, and the Ursulines prayed again to our Blessed Lady, save us. And there was another miracle. Andrew Jackson didn't have enough troops to beat the British, but the British, by mistake, because it was foggy, marched into a swamp, and almost all of them drowned. 15,000 British soldiers on the plains of Chalmette, helpless in a swamp. And that gave Andrew Jackson his victory. Thanks again to Our Lady of Quick Help when they needed it. <clears throat> Several paintings have been drawn commemorating the double miracles of escape from the 1812 fire and escape from the British in 1815. Scattered over Louisiana, lots of churches have been named and dedicated to Our Lady of Prompt Succor, including a church in South Chalmette, another in West Wego, 
one in White Castle, Louisiana. In New Orleans, there are parochial schools named after Our Lady of Prompt Succor, including a high school. <clears throat> and Ursuline Academy for Girls is still in existence after all those years. Adjacent to the Academy is the Ursuline Convent and the National Shrine of Our Lady of Prompt Succor. Something else that keeps Our Lady of Prompt Succor still visible in, to New Orleans is the fact that she's the one you pray to when there's a hurricane. And if you go to New Orleans at Mardi Gras time, watching one of the many parades and hold up your arms shouting, throw me something, mister, you might catch a doubloon stamped with the image of the lady. In fact, I've also seen a set of Mardi Gras beads marked, marked with the prompt sucker tag. In Louisiana, particularly around New Orleans, she's everywhere. <laughs> That's it. I hope you enjoyed this chapter. For the other 15 stories in the book, Amazon stands ready to sell you a copy for your Kindle or a paperback or hardcover copy. If you don't like the book, I doubt that Amazon would give you your money back, but the book will look good on your shelf. Thanks for watching and have a great day.